you've had your baby, congratulations. I am sure you were ecstatic, over the moon, delirious with happiness. But you might be facing some new challenges as you head into the next six months. Life might be a little bit different. There'll definitely be less sleep happening and you'll have less time for yourself. So today's video, I wanted to give you an easy framework for building an effective routine for those moments you can steal for yourself to help you keep control of your skin or tackle some of the problems that might have arisen in pregnancy that you're now better placed having given birth to try to solve. So the first thing one might expect is that losing your glow is pretty normal. Your sleep's gonna be disturbed and you're gonna be up every few hours. You're probably gonna feel a bit more anxious just because life has changed. All of a sudden you're responsible for this small wriggly thing. Um, and I think that that whole state can sometimes lend itself towards breaking out, to barrier dysfunction, maybe getting a little more dry and brittle, which can then make it very hard to build an effective routine. But I say the biggest problem is that you're time poor. So let's talk about a few things that you can do that are simple, easy to put in place, that will make a big difference to your skin and dealing with those concerns. So first, simple, easy fix is to switch to a non-foaming cleanser or just to simplify the whole process of cleansing. You want something quick and effective that doesn't deplete your skin and leave it drier than when you started. So getting rid of anything foaming and fragranced or containing essential oils will be advantageous. You want something bland, effective that does the job and doesn't do anything extra. So a simple non-foaming, non-clogging, on-fragrance gel cleanser is going to be your best choice. Try Flawless Cleanser or CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser for something simple and elegant that just gets your skin clean. So when you think about the morning routine, you might wanna think about adding in an acid of some sort. Now, if you're breakout prone or redness prone, or your skin has developed pigmentation during pregnancy and you want to kind of give that a bit of a nudge, then azelaic acid is gonna be the best choice for you. And that's uh, available in preparations from anything from 5% to 20% on prescription. So start low and build up. That's gonna be a really effective and you know single step that can make a big difference to your complexion and help you just feel a bit more confident and positive um, in regaining your glow. If you're just looking for a bit of refinement in texture, things are just a bit rough, a bit lacking in dewiness, you otherwise have normal skin, then a simple AHA or alpha hydroxy acid is a good choice. And think of lactic acid or glycolic acid um, as, as, as good ways of exfoliating your skin, but in a way that doesn't physically challenge it and is much kinder. Next, we come to hydration, which is such an important step. And if you choose the wrong one, your skin will really suffer at this time because lack of sleep or disturbed sleep really does increase transepidermal water loss and that sort of stressed out cortisol ridden state. So you want to look for something that's a bit more sumptuous and elegant than you might normally choose, particularly if you're someone with combination oily skin where you think, oh, that's too rich for me. No, try leaning into it. Your skin really will be comforted by something that's got a little bit of shea or squalene in it. It's just gonna have a little bit more heft, but won't clog pores. So seek out something labeled non-comedogenic, lean into moisturizer. This is a good time to comfort your skin a little bit more. You'll have started your sunscreen habit during pregnancy, I hope, and this is a great time to keep that going. Again, it's important um, in context, particularly of those of you with pigmentation. But I think also, if you're going to be out for walks with the baby, um, just to make sure your skin is protected, make sure that you remember to take that one step that's gonna be the most important in terms of preserving and maintaining your complexion, even during this turbulent time. Now we come on to night time and the very good news is that a retinoid is fine to add back into your routine now. So that will be amazing news for any of you who originally were doing premature aging work or working on pigmentation or acne prior to your pregnancy. So the main concern with vitamin A is its use in pregnancy because that's the time when vitamin A is being used as a signaling molecule in the growing baby inside you. So once you've delivered the baby, using it topically 
on your face is absolutely fine. Just keep it well away from babies. I wouldn't be using retinoids on an area near your breast if you have, say, for example, breakouts on your chest. Be very careful that you're not putting baby near to um, skin that's got retinoid on it, just simply from an irritancy point of view. But otherwise, fine to use it on your face. And it really will be the thing that makes it that little bit easier to get by with less sleep. I remember this from my nights on call. My retinoid did keep my skin in a better state than it otherwise would have from all that broken sleep. Again, for breakouts, benzoyl peroxide is fine and is definitely the way I would lean if I was getting new blemishes, new spots. Um, and that's often best if you're using a retinoid at night to factor it into your morning routine. As far as oral treatments for acne goes, best discussed with your doctor in context of the fact that you're now lactating. But a few more options open up to us whenever you've delivered your baby. Spinal lactone, for example, can be used um, during lactation, provided that the benefits outweigh any possible risk. But it's low risk, um, realistically, in lactation. So it is an option, but you'd need to discuss that with your specialist. Final thing to think about is your hands. Now, all of us are suffering from dry hands at present anyway, but if you just had a baby, your hands are going to be in water a lot. So really do think about taking preventative action to maintain this, the quality of the barrier of your skin. So washing with something gentle and soothing, it's not going to dry your skin out. Um, Dermal 500 is a good option for this because it's got a little bit of antiseptic, but it's essentially a moisturizing agent. And then make sure you moisturize every single time you wash your hands. Um, and if you can protect them with gloves, um, then all the better as well. But do put moisturizer on after every hand wash to avoid them getting chapped um, and potentially developing eczema because you can get a simple irritant eczema if your hands are washed often enough. And as I say, that's very common in, in new mums. So just something to be thought about in advance a couple of hand products I love, um, La Roche-Posay Cicoplast Main is excellent. And also the CeraVe hand cream is a really good and affordable um, moisturizer for your hands too. So try one of those um, and be careful how you wash. So you'll have been through a lot by this point in time and you might feel that your skin isn't the biggest priority. So I just wanna give you a bit of information so that you're forewarned, which means you're forearmed, so you can put a few simple things into, into place that are time-saving but effective and help you just get a little bit of you back when it comes to your skin at a time when you're probably going to be neglecting yourself a little bit. I want you to have a few little tips up your sleeve that mean that you get control of your skin again. Um, but that you enjoy this time as well. So I hope those tips were helpful, guys, and I'll see you again soon.